Number five, but haven't the Ten Commandments been changed? Why would God change it? Did He make a mistake? He wrote it in stone. How many of you heard that they've raised the speed limit on Interstate 80 to 80 miles an hour? Did you hear that? A couple people heard that. I hadn't heard it. How many of you believe me if I tell you that they've done that? We got one person with faith. I appreciate that. <laughs> Love is blind. A couple of people believe me. Well, they haven't. You know why you don't believe me? Because you know that a government is responsible to very carefully educate its people in regard to a law change that would have such a, a wide effect. Isn't that right? If suddenly you found out they had changed which side of the road you're supposed to drive on and the government doesn't tell anybody, we'd have chaos. You think God Almighty is going to speak His law with His voice? He's going to write it with His finger? He's going to give it to His people in stone? And then He's going to change the very middle of it and nothing's in the Bible about it? Come on, friends. What kind of a wishy-washy God do we have? He says, I am the Lord. I change not. The Sabbath has not been changed. Something did change, and we're going to show you where that happened in history. But God didn't do it. Question six. Did the apostles keep the Sabbath? Answer. And Paul, as his manner was, went into them three Sabbath days and reasoned with them out of the Scriptures. Acts 17, verse 2. Paul and his company went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. The Bible tells us also that in uh, Acts 18, verse 4, he reasoned every Sabbath, persuading Jews and Greeks. Paul went to the church every Sabbath day. He was a tent maker. He worked six days a week making tents. He was kind of a self-supporting missionary. Every Sabbath, he would go and he'd preach to anybody that would listen. Even if they were not in a synagogue, he would go on out by a river on the Sabbath day. There's nothing through the whole New Testament where Paul says, don't keep the Sabbath anymore. Now, he does address certain ceremonial Sabbaths that the Jews kept. And this is where people get confused. You realize that there was not only the seventh day Sabbath of the Ten Commandments, but much later, after sin, on paper, God wrote some ceremonial Sabbaths. They were laws that related to the temple and its services. The, the Passover was a yearly Sabbath, an annual date. It was not a part of the weekly cycle. And Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, Feast of Trumpets, so forth. There were a lot of Jewish holidays that were Sabbath days that came once a year. But the weekly Sabbath of the Ten Commandments was completely distinct from that. The Jewish Sabbath days are, uh, they're not mandatory now. If you want to keep those, Paul says, if you want to regard the day unto the Lord, regard the day. If you want to keep the resurrection time and celebrate His resurrection, that's up to you. There's no command to do it. But when it comes to one of the Ten Commandments, that's not optional, friends. Amen? Whoever breaks the law in one point, he is guilty of all. The Bible tells us that at one time, one of the children of Israel broke the Sabbath day by going out and working. And Moses asked the Lord, what do we do? And God said, the penalty is death. And you think God's going to say the penalty is death back there. And then you get to the New Testament and say, hey, if you want to, go ahead. It's up to you. Is God like that? No, my God is more consistent than that, friends. Number seven, did the Gentiles also worship on the Sabbath day? The Bible tells us they did. You read there in Isaiah chapter 56, verse 2. Also the sons of the stranger that join themselves to the Lord, everyone that keeps the Sabbath from polluting it and takes hold of my covenant, even them I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful. How many of you want to be joyful? In my house of prayer, for my house shall be called the house of prayer for all people. Jesus quoted that during his ministry. And then, of course, you read there in your lesson where it tells us in Acts chapter 16, verse 13, they went out on the Sabbath day and sat down by a river to speak to the women that resorted thither. That was written by Luke, a Gentile. It would have been a good place for him to say, well, they don't keep it anymore. Number eight. But wasn't the Sabbath changed to Sunday at Christ's death or resurrection? How many of you have heard that we keep Sunday in honor of the resurrection? Have you heard that before? Uh, where's the scripture that tells us to do that? Now, I'm glad he rose. And the Bible says God gave us baptism to remember his death, burial, and resurrection. But there is no scripture anywhere from Genesis to Reve Revelation that tells us keep Sunday in honor of the resurrection. Nowhere. Is it important that Jesus died for us on Friday? Does he tell us it's a new Sabbath? No. 
Is it important that he establish the New Testament covenant on Thursday evening? Yeah, yeah we're all glad for that too. Does that mean that that's a new Sabbath? When you think about it, Jesus even kept the Sabbath in his death. He ceased from his work. He said, it is finished. Friday afternoon, he went to sleep. He rested through the Sabbath from his work of saving the human race. And then he rose again Sunday to continue his work for you and me as our high priest. Nowhere does it tell us that we're supposed to now keep Sunday. That came hundreds of years after Jesus, Peter, James, and John. And we'll prove that to you from history, the encyclopedia, every way that we can. It's very clear. Friends, if you want to know the truth, you'll know. It's just as plain as it can be. And you know, furthermore, why would God change it? He made it in the Garden of Eden before there was sin. Did he make a boo-boo? Was there something wrong with the seventh day? It wasn't going to work anymore? No. The very purpose for the seventh day was more needed than ever after the ministry of Christ. To help us remember, he not only created the world, but he can recreate you and me. It's a sign of that. Amen? Every Sabbath day, you're celebrating the fact that God is your creator and sustainer. Number nine, some people say the Sabbath will be kept in the new earth. Is this correct? Sure. Keep something in mind, friends. The devil messed up a plan that God had. God had a perfect plan for a perfect world where we lived in a garden and ate from a tree of life. Is God going to ultimately accomplish his perfect plan? You bet. Are we someday going to live in that garden in a perfect world and eat from that tree? That's right. We're going to live forever. Was the Sabbath part of his perfect plan in the Garden of Eden? Sure, why would he get rid of it? It's going to be part of the perfect plan in the new earth. Isaiah 66 tells us. Number 10, but isn't Sunday the Lord's Day? Where in the Bible does it call the first day of the week the Lord's Day? Nowhere. Some assume in Revelation chapter 1 verse 10, John says, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. And people just are assuming that was Sunday. There's not a shred of evidence that says it was the first day of the week. On the contrary, everything else in the Bible tells us the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord. Jesus said, I am Lord of the Sabbath day. Isaiah tells us, my holy day, God calls it. It's his day. The idea that there's another day that's the Sabbath is just not biblical. Question number 11. Should I keep Sunday in honor of Christ's resurrection? Well, once again, friends, I told you, that sounds really nice. But there's no scripture to do that, that tells us to do that. You know what I think is really peculiar? Now, when I first learned the Sabbath truth, I was upset. I went to church on Sunday. I used to go to church on Sunday like a lot of you and some of you who are viewing right now. First thing I did, I did not want to go to church on the seventh day because I was already different enough. I thought, I don't want to be that peculiar. And I went to some of my friends that were Sunday ministers. And I said, why do we go to church on Sunday? Give me some, some evidence. I didn't want to believe it. One pastor, I went to about five or six pastors, I got seven or eight different answers. One of them said, we, we keep Sunday in honor of the resurrection. I said, okay, where's the scripture? He said, well, there is no scripture, but we have a long-standing tradition. Then I remember what Jesus said, you set aside the commandment of God in order to observe your tradition. I went to another minister. He said, we're not under the law anymore. We're under grace. I said, does that mean that we're supposed to break the Ten Commandments? He said, no, we're supposed to keep nine of them. I said, so the one commandment we're supposed to break is the one that begins with the word remember? That didn't set very well. Then I went to another minister. He was very creative. He said, back in the days of Joshua, the sun stood still. Saturday turned into Sunday. I said, oh, that's clever. I said, then why did Jesus still do it on the seventh day and everyone after that time? And you know what, friends? Little by little, I had to ask myself a very sobering question. Am I going to follow Jesus and be a real Christian or am I going to follow what's popular? Am I going to follow the world and its traditions or am I going to follow God's word? Very few real Bible Christians in the world today that say no matter what everyone does, even in my denomination, I don't follow what's popular. I want to follow what the Bible says because I will answer to God someday, not the pastor. And God's word is very clear. And the Sabbath is one of his commandments. Question number 12. Well, if Sunday keeping isn't in the Bible, whose idea was it anyway? Do you know, we're going to be getting into some of the prophecies about the beast and the mark of the beast and what was going to happen. 
One of the prophecies in Daniel, speaking about the dark ages, said this religious power would think to change times and laws. Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. Well, there's only one commandment, friends, that is both a time and a law. It's the fourth commandment. Amen? And that's exactly what happened. God foretold it was going to happen. You know what I also thought was really suspicious? I could go to any church in Michigan, most any Christian church, and I could preach, and incidentally, friends, I have preached in Assembly of God, many, many Assembly of God churches, Nazarene churches. I used to teach Methodist Sunday school, multiple Baptist churches. I've even shared in Episcopal churches. I mean, I could go down the line. I've been in scores of different denominations, and I've had the privilege of preaching to these people. And I know there are lovely, spirit-filled people in many different persuasions. Amen? I believe that. They're following what they've been taught. And that's why the light is going forth in the last days. I could stand up in those churches and I could preach a sermon on honor your father and mother and they'd all go, Amen, praise the Lord, hallelujah. I could preach a sermon on do not steal. Amen. Don't worship other gods. Amen. Thou shalt not commit adultery. They'd agree, but they'd all be real quiet. <laughs> And then I stand up in the same church and I say, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The seventh day, Saturday is the Sabbath of the Lord. They jump to their feet and say, we're not under the law, we're under grace. Something's peculiar. Pastor in these churches can make an altar call. Young man come forward crying and saying, Pastor, I've decided to accept Jesus and I'm not going to kill anymore. Pastor would say, I'm glad to hear that. Or they could come forward and say, Pastor, I've decided I'm not going to steal anymore. Praise the Lord. God's working with you. That's the Spirit of God. I'm not going to lie anymore. Praise the Lord. I'm glad to hear that, young man. Pastor, I've decided to keep the fourth commandment and go to church on the Sabbath day. No, you're falling from grace. Don't do that. What's the matter with us? Something's very strange when ministers are telling people not to keep one of God's commandments. The Bible tells us that this would happen. Number 13, isn't it very dangerous to tamper with God's law? 